Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Past Money Plan. I'm Kirby. That's Alex over there. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the lending market, how lenders are dealing with the financial banking collapse, and what will lenders do as far as investors or home buyers when it comes to buying rental property. With all that being said, Alex, I know you just recently bought a rental property. You paid cash because you're a big baller shot caller. Uh, for for the, the rental market in general, have you... Uh, I mean, I don't know if you talked to anybody recently or you've been dealing with any banks or anything like that or the lending requirements or what you've heard out there in the ether sphere of social media or what's going on. So I'll let you start it off and then we'll come back to me. Yeah. Um, before I got that property, I was looking at a few that were like in the uh, 100,000 range, like low 100,000. And um, I don't know if this is for all banks, um, but I did check with uh, one of the banks that I bank with um, and they had changed their requirements for getting loans and they changed it for uh, investment properties. And it was either you could either buy a duplex or a single family and that was it. Like you couldn't buy. And I reiterated that with him and asked him again, is that, uh, you know, just for that's like for investment loans, correct? And he's like, yeah, that's all we will give a loan for is a duplex or single family. And- So no triplexes, no fourplexes? Yeah, no. And then okay. before that, because I would say about six months before I had asked him, uh, this very recent uh, email was, um, the the requirement was you could if you did get a single family you could put as little as 15 percent down um but now for single family or duplex you have to put 30 percent down and then the lo right. the minimum loan is seventy thousand. so it was like if i put if i got a ninety five thousand dollar property in georgia and i put 30 percent down you know, now can I even get a loan for the property? You know, have I fallen under that threshold of what they're, and it was the same thing you went through with, I think, Rocket Mortgage, right? Where like you would, they wanted you to pay more for the property just so you could be above their minimum requirement for that loan. And it makes no sense when you're actually investing in a property. And it was, I mean, it was very precarious because um, it was, it was insane because I mean, of course, I do multiple deals a year. So I'm always talking to bankers and things like that. Um, so I'll just give a quick run through. So historically, historically, before, let's say the last three, four months, a single, fam single family lending, like if you just buy one unit was the same if you was buying one through four units, it was the same. And then once you get over four units, then it gets to commercial lending. And that's a whole different stratosphere, but it used to be the same. And then, like you like you mentioned, um, on one deal, on one deal I was doing, and then you know I went around searched different banks, and it was different different requirements. Uh, There's one bank, uh, local bank in Oklahoma. They they said, yeah, we'll do the deal, we'll do the deal, but now you have to pay an outrageous interest rate. Like even buying points, you they would still say eight percent interest. No, I'm not doing that. Then, like you said, with the previous lender, we had the we ha I had the deal set up, and then what happened is we started off at one number, and then I, you know how I do it. Once I get into a deal, the price that we agreed to originally is not the price I'm paying. I'm gonna walk it down, keep walking it down, keep walking it down. So I walked it down so much, good on my part to get the price down way lower, but then. I failed to meet the requirements for the bank. And then they said, no, we can't, we can't do it because it's this price. And then now it'll cost too much. And then the cost to borrow and all that other stuff. And then, so I asked, I asked the uh, female that was, I was on the phone with, and she said, I said, so you would rather me buy a property for a higher cost. And then let's say it didn't cash flow. But then you will give me the loan, even though the property doesn't cash flow and it won't even meet the requirements to pay the mortgage. And she said, yeah. And then so found that interesting. So 
I pivoted and went somewhere else, of course. I pivoted and went somewhere else. And then at the last minute, now remember, smaller banks say 8%. So I pivoted going back to the 8% bank because I just figured I'll work the deal some more and make it work for me. And then at the you know 11th hour, the original bank called me back who said they couldn't do the loan. They were like, oh, well, we have this special deal. So then, and then they, they came back at 6.5%. But then there was another caveat to it. So like you said, single families, you could pay lowest 15% down on the investment property, but it's usually 20%. But now they have adjusted this company and you called them out before. This company, Rocket Mortgage say, now for single family homes, you have to put down at least 25%, which, which is cool. But then I got the interest rate down to 6.5%. And the requirements are getting more strict because even going further along. So I'm going through the process, going through the process. And the whole time, I, I mean, I've done many uh, deals with this institution. I did many deals with this institution. And then the only thing they looked at is, you know, regular personal tax returns, yada, yada, yada. Everything's good to go. Now, my business accounts has been on there since the genesis, um, everything else. Then, so this time, the deal I just closed on this past Friday, they they wanted to dig into my business accounts. They wanted to dig into the owners of the accounts. They wanted to dig into the operation agreements. They wanted to dig into everything. I mean, at one time during the process, they actually said, no, we're suspending it because we can't get the information that we want. I'm like, this is the information. It is not what... You just don't want me to put all my information. You want me to put all my information out there on blast on the internet, but I'm not. So of course I had to get uh, lawyers involved and stuff, stuff like that, and send letters and yada yada yada. And all at the end of the day, it did get processed through. Like I said, this past Friday, but it was a more stringent process. They're being more harder on, uh, especially investors, because they believe investors are the devil for some reason. Uh, but they're being more harder. And making the requirements uh, more tougher. And then now fast forwarding to in this process, while I'm going through the loan, then we have the bank collapse. The, you know, SVB Bank and then a couple other banks, they collapse. The process is going to get harder because what went on with the SVB banks is because banks are fractional lenders. The money that people deposit, they loan out 90% of the money. So now that these banks had to get bailed out, even though people don't want to call it bailed out, these banks get bailed out because they, you know, they've been investing money very aggressively to give people the yield back in their savings account. So now all these other major banks and the Federal Reserve had to capitalize these banks to have enough money to have reserves to pay if people want to take their money out. So now that money that they was lending, the requirements would be way more stringent to lend that money out because they already in trouble right now for making aggressive bets and aggressive loan to cover the yield. So now banks are going to hold more cash in their account to cover people that want to take out the money to deposit in case there's a run on the bank or something like that. So the housing market, the, the, the lending requirements will get harder. And that's what happens in these economic cycles when they want to control spending. They will just increase. They, they'll say, yeah, we're still lending money, but they will make the requirements way harder than it was before to get the process done. Do you think that's going to cause less, uh, I wouldn't say business, but uh, less revenue or income for the banks? Since it will, I would assume it will. OK, because I was going to say I would assume the majority of house purchases or uh, property purchases come from um, investors, not from, you know, home buyers. Well, no, investors, investors percentage wise is maybe 25% of the housing market. It's not, it's not the majority, but the, the thing is, is when you're in an economic tightening cycle, you're never going to hear a bank say, no, we're not lending money. You're never going to hear that. What they're going to do is just adjust the requirement to make it harder for you to lend the money. A bank will never say we're not lending. They will say, they will come up with another excuse on why you can't get the loan because these requirements, these new requirements, this new regulatory requirement is what's needed to get it. And then they, they will adjust the requirement just so you won't qualify, especially if you're close to uh debt to income ratio or whatever. But 
yes, it will cause uh, a lag in revenue for these companies because now the the requirements are higher. It's more stringent. So the more stringent the requirements, the higher the hurdle rate, it will take people to get over that, especially in the investment. I, I mean, I'm not buying homes to own or occupy, but it is it will cause people who doesn't have the financial resources, the means, have the knowledge on how the financial industry go or how the banking industry goes. They will have a harder time getting loans, especially if they're trying to buy investment properties. So people might see the rate coming down, but the requirements to get those loans now are harder than it was back in 2020, 2021, 2022, or hell, even early 2023. Because remember, I just bought another property uh, right before the one we just closed on and I had no problem at all. Do you think that's going to be like a permanent adjustment the banks will make, like say that how they uh, adjusted from what happened in 2008, how they made all these new changes, you know, you have to have proof of income, proof of, you know, everything to qualify for a loan. The adjustments that they're making now, do you think that will be the new next stage? Like now it's on top of what they've already set for 2008 and now these are new requirements permanently? Oh, and it's, it's just a cycle. It's a cycle. When they, they want to close out the economic, when they want to tighten up the economic shoestrings, they just increase requirements. This is not, this won't be a permanent change. This is just temporary. When they want the flood the market with money again, they will loosen the requirements. And that's the same thing they did. I mean, the uh, 08 financial crisis happened, they tightened the requirement. Then we got out of that cycle. And then they loosen the requirement. And then now they want to tighten the cycle again. So they put more stringent requirements on. And then that's that's just how it that's how it is. And it goes back to monetary policies and things like that of how they want to control the money supply in the in the United States. I'll just stick to the United States. That's how they want to control the uh, money supply in the United States. So they just put more stricter rules on there because, like I said, the banks are not gonna say they're not lending, it's just the requirements are different. So it's just about now it's you got to put more money down. You have to have a better debt to income ratio or whatever, what have you, whatever new thing that's going to come out next week. You have to meet those requirements. If you can't meet those requirements, then you're not going to get the loan. Then you're going to have to shop around, maybe get a higher interest rate to get it done. But that's just the nature of the beast that's going on. It's going to be harder for people that's going on, especially those people. I saw a chat in the uh, comment box that a guy said, Oh yeah, I'm waiting for the house the housing market to collapse, and then I'm just going to jump all in. No, the requirements are going to be different. And just and I told him, just think that you you just like eighty six percent of the other people are waiting on the sideline, and then you think that you with I mean I don't know how much money this gentleman had that wrote the post, but you that have you know let's say two hundred thousand dollars, you think you're going to get first dibs on the lowest property? It's going to be people with the millions of billions sitting on the sidelines waiting to get first dibs and going to suck up everything. So as we always say, always look for a great deal no matter what environment you're in. And then that's why still today, we're still buying properties right now because we understand how the cash flow works and things like that. And going off that too, before we close out, um, for those watching, like what, one of the best points you made to me when I was buying the first property was you have to make the deal work for you. And I didn't understand that at first, but it's it's all true. I mean, like, because when you're buying real estate, like the two properties I bought did not make any sense if I just paid the list price, like made no sense at all, especially this last one, 45000 with $250 in rent. Like that, that is horrible. But just like, and it was funny how fast it was like the, you know, just I called you and I told you I'm looking at this property or I think you called me and I'm like, Hey, I'm looking at this property. It's 45 grand, 215 rent. You're like, just call, offer him 30. And I was like, so I offered him 30 and then they took it. I was like, Oh crap, I'm in the deal. <laughs> I was like, all right. So then from there, it's like, you know, you can go, you, you know, you just have to take that, take that initiative, like going back to the comment that the guy made, I saw the comment as well, but why would you wait? If you like, especially you say, we don't know how much cash he has, but, if you are someone that has 200 grand saved up, why are you going to wait for that very bottom when you could grab a house right now and just make it come to your bottom? Like, just bring it down. Just make the deal work for you. But 
Right. And then the thing is, they're not going to know when the bottom is because they're going to be waiting for somebody on the news to tell them, oh, the housing market is bottom. And they don't say the housing market is bottom when it's going down. They say the housing market bottom when after it already started going back up. So people miss the bottom because people are not at the uh, have the aptitude to actually search, research, look at the uh, their as you know, one run out of time, say, look at their buy box every day. Like it's an exercise every day. I look at the markets where I'm invested because that's how I find deals. Like the, the deal before this one, like I told you, it was only on the market for 12 hours. I seen it. I was like, oh, this is a great deal. Boom. Send the contract in, got accepted, of course, <laughs> offer below ask and everything else, everything else worked out. But people don't know that. And I brought, I brought the deal to, to the bottom. Like you said, just like this deal here that we closed on Friday. I brought the deal to the bottom of the market. I was like, all right, this is where I'm comfortable at buying the property at. The cash flow will work perfectly. Even if even if the value of the property dropped another 25%, the rents that I'll be making will more than cash flow, the debt obligations and things like that will more than cash flow. So I don't care where the value of the property goes. I care about the cash flow I'm receiving on the property. And then you can probably get somebody in the cheap seats now and will say, oh, but if a recession happens, then that person will lose their job. Okay. So what? This person lose the, this person lose their job. If 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 unemployment goes up to 10%, that's another six percent higher than where we at now. So 10% of the people will be unemployed, 90% of the people will have their job. This their job is going to be somebody that's written at a higher level that want to. If you know their economic situation is worse or getting deteriorated because of recession, they're going to move down into the marketplace where I'm at. Then I can rent it to them. I'm not worried about rates going down or anything like that. There is more people out there. This is not the only renter in the world that will rent this property. And then that's how I just keep going about it. And people sitting here looking at the news, worried about what's going on. And that's really not the biggest problem that's that's happening in the atmosphere. But the more you listen to, you know, they call them cat crash bros or people saying the world coming to an end. Well, if the world comes to an end, great. I won't be here to see it anyway. So all the banks that all the banks that I owe money to, I'm dead. It's, you, you can have it. It don't matter. But the world's not coming to an end. So I'm going to keep grinding, keep executing, keep going through the process, keep doing the work and keep acquiring properties until that time is over. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, share, uh, leave a comment, and we'll see you guys in the next video.